Hi guys, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally bringing you my Mythathon, basically my August TBR because I am participating in Mythathon for the entire month of August and I am also co-hosting. That's probably an important thing to put out there. I'm co-hosting and participating in Mythathon for the entire month of August and shenanigans. I basically like fit my whole TBR into Mythathon and it shits up to be lit, bitch. Also, um, <laughs> I am going to try, attempt, hopefully, we can do it, vlog at least once a week for the entire month my Mythathon progress. Like, a, a week-long reading vlog every month. Like, cause, bitch, woo. Anyway, one cool, like, housekeeping thing is not even housekeeping thing. Just one cool thing real quick before we start. I am now a Book of the Month Y. A edition affiliate which is pretty dope so book of the month is like this online book club slash subscription where you have the option to choose one of five early releases or new releases and this one of course is YA so like I said I am now an affiliate which is pretty dope and I have my very own link which you can follow through to find out and join book of the month and I'll link it down below I mean it's pretty cool it's like a massive book club and some of these books you get before the release and some are like brand new releases and they're pretty dope. Like this cool one that I picked called Symptoms of a Heartbreak by Sona Chirai Potra. This, ooh, baby, this book. This book is a contemporary rom-com about um, Indian American teenage med school prodigy. Like 16 year old, this teenager is a full-fledged doctor who gets a job basically treating kids with cancer and ends up kind of falling in love with one of her patients, a teenager who was just recently diagnosed with cancer. And she ends up kind of in this like between a rock and a hard place between her feelings and her job and risking her career already at 16 to improve this boy's chances. I have not read it yet. I can't wait to get to it. It was sent to me by Book of the Month and it was one of their options and I believe I know what the choices are for next month. Y'all don't know yet for August I mean but I've seen them. They're pretty fucking dope. Okay so put my link down in the description box. Click it. Draw Book of the Month. Get cool shit. Alright now back to other cool shit. Alright so Mythathon. Let's let's tell you what it is and then I can get to the TBR, okay? For those of you who have not watched the announcement video. Mythathon was created by Jesse from Bow Ties and Books to commemorate their booktube anniversary. They wanted to do something cool and kind of dope to tie in their anniversary, even though they always do cool and dope things, but this is just one more cool and dope thing to add to the list of cool and dope things they have been doing since they've started their booktube channel. Now, it is divided up into teams led by the four co-hosts, the one of which is myself. For each co-host, Jesse has picked a god or goddess and then a um, sign to go along with it. So you can kind of tie in your uh, astrological slash zodiac sign and either way you want to do it. It's pretty cool. So there is myself who is team Oya slash team Air. There is Cindy who is Hades slash team Fire. There is TJ Reads the Stars who is team Apollo slash team Wata. And then there is Brittany the Bibliophile who is Aphrodite slash team Earth. Now, I have already explained all of their prompts in um, my announcement video, so I'll link that down in the description box if you have not watched it. And now we're going to go through my prompts because my prompts will then lead me to telling you what books I'm reading for them. So let's get to the TBR part. Now, for my team, for all of the teams, there's a group book. My, uh, the book for my group, the group read for my team, English Lauren, is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison. I will be getting this from the library. It's already in holds. I don't have one to show you, so I'll put a picture here. It's about an outcast from the north who her mom mysteriously dies, and then she gets summoned um, to the city where, oddly enough, she is announced as the heiress to the king, and she gets embroiled into this, like, giant, politically messy battle royale for, you know, the kingdom, basically. I'm expecting it to be all kinds of dope and because it is written by N.K. Jemison, I am expecting it to rip out my heart and shred it to pieces and give it back to me and be like, but why you mad though? You knew what you was getting into. I expect there to be epic world building. I expect there to be an insane, like well thought out 
freaking backstory for all of these characters. I expect the characters to be like tri-dimensional. I'm just expecting all kind of greatness because that's what I've seen from her thus far. And even though I know it's probably going to shred my entire spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm still excited. So, that's for the group read. Um, first prompt. Unconventional female characters. Now for this one, I went a little ham and I got a lot of books, but it's okay. Just go with it. First book is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakrabarty. This is the sequel to The City of Brass and this is the second book in the David Bye trilogy. So I won't tell you what this one is about. But The City of Brass, however, is a Middle Eastern inspired, it's like epic fantasy and also historical fantasy. It is just fucking amazing. She's created this world like um, it starts off with the main character in Cairo and it goes into this world with Jin who have their own like caste system and this political system. It's just really, really in-depth magic and world building. Also, well, it's really gorgeous magic and world building. And then also like nothing and nobody is what, nothing and no one is just what you expect in this series. Like you cannot sleep on this book. You cannot sleep on the detail in this book. These characters are shysty, shady, tricky half of them don't even know the truth the damn selves it's just it's very gripping it's very enthralling and then the writing and the setting is just gorgeous and i fucking love it this is a sequel to that book also i am buddy reading it this month too so it is a group read between myself between noria from noria reads joe from average joe reads and then sarah from novel serendipity and i will link all of their channels and all of their twitter um twitter handles down in the description box because you need to go follow them. They're all some pretty dope people. Next book that has an unconventional female character is Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the sequel to Trail of Lightning which I read last summer when I moved here and it shredded my entire being. This one is an urban fantasy and it is so fucking good. It is not even funny. Well this one, I haven't read this one yet, but Trail of Lightning was redamnedonculous with how good it was. Like I gave my copy away so somebody else could read it because I needed them to read it. I don't give books away, do you hear me? But I gave this one away because I needed to share that fabulousness. It is everything I love um, in urban fantasy where there are moments of lightness, but it is also like dark and gritty and real world mixed in with the magical shit. Like there is there is some shit going on in this world, okay? It's kind of post-apocalyptic. Um, it takes place after a climate apocalypse, I believe is what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah, a climate apocalypse. Um, and the Dineta, which is formerly the Navajo tribe, it um, centers around them. So this book is heavily Native American, his own voices by a Native American author. And again, like the shit is just dope, okay? Like the writing is insane. Like I said, like the shit that happens in this book, it has the best parts of urban fantasy for me, which means like you get your fantasy in it and you get real world dark and gritty shit. Like people have to make hard choices, but there's also comedy and bits of levity in it. There's not as much comedy in this one, like, but again, this book is so fucking good. Maggie, who is a kind of monster hunter, um, Navajo woman, makes some really fucking difficult choices in this book like she knows she's probably gonna hit the fan but it will be worse if she doesn't do this horrible thing she's got to do so she's like fuck it gotta do it it's done mad at me i mean sorry but you're welcome she kind of lives well everybody's off the grid more or less but they live in this area that is encompassed by this big wall so you really mostly see right now most of the characters that i saw were people of color and different people in this dineta tribe setting um this in this Dineta tribe. Like I said, it's like post-apocalyptic and then you get these little bits of real world shit in there where it's just like, people mention how, you know, how they have to get along with shit being really hard now. And I remember Maggie in the first book saying, you know, this is an apocalypse for you, but my people always had to deal with this shit. And it's just so fucking just, ah, go read it. Why does this fit on a conventional character? I mean, I don't think I need to tell you about that. Like usually you get like these hero characters that are more conventional. We very rarely get like a female anti-hero. So that's why I picked her in this book. And Nari from The Kingdom of Copper, the main character who I never even told her name because I suck. She's also kind of um, an anti-hero. We really don't know what she is. But you know, she starts off in the first book as being like a kind of female Aladdin, like a tree rat kind of character who is basically like pickpocketing and doing some shit she has to do. She's still a good person, but at the same time, it's like, bitch, I gotta eat. So that's why I also have her in this category. Next. Next is Kingdom of Souls by Arena Baron. This is an arc of a fucking fantasy book that comes out September 10th. And I'm so ready to dive into this book. It's not even 
funny. The main character, Ara, comes from a family of witch doctors. Year after year after year, she's waiting for her powers to kick in and they don't, which disappoints her pretty uh, powerful, ambitious family members. Um, she is tired of this happening, so she kind of starts to facilitate, vacillate English, Lauren. She kind of starts to go back and forth more than not she wants to do this thing where basically she can get magic, um... She can buy magic at the expense of years off of her life. It's really not a, a thing, obviously, like she wants to do, but she doesn't want to not have magic either. That choice then becomes harder when the Demon King starts to stir and awaken, and she can continue to do this kind of foul, tainted thing to get magic and put herself on the line, sacrifice bits of herself to keep the Demon King from more or less, like, fucking up the world there's that but again people of color is it's got like voodoo magic and stuff and everything witch doctor magic obvi and like I, I unboxed it and if you haven't watched the cool stuff that came in this box I'll link that video down in the description box or I may post it after this I don't know what order I'm posting these in but probably post it before this but oh my god I'm so excited for this book wow then there is Slay by Brittany Morris which comes out September 24th I am so super fucking stoked for this one too. I've had this one for a long time but I've been saving it. Yeah anyway I'm stupid. Um Slay is about 17 year old teenager Kiara Johnson who is one of the few black children at her prep school. She's a math tutor. She's super smart and nobody knows that you know as a side hobby as an interest of hers she's created this kind of she spends a lot of time playing this multiplayer online role-playing card game where everybody's kind of like avatars of uh, everybody is playing as a Nubian avatar and nobody knows that she is the creator of this game of this entire world. Now this game is wildly popular and it gets even more crazy when in Kansas City someone is killed over a dispute that happened in the Slay world. Then shit kind of blows up and goes a little ham. So people are starting to call this world, you know, violent. It's exclusionist because everybody's African players in it or black players or what have you. They're trying to pin it as racist, as exclusionist, as like a place where violent, thuggish, criminal type people hang out when really it's just a video game for like black people to get together and play without having to deal with all of that type of shit. So now Kiara is dealing with all the backlash from this while trying to kind of maintain herself and is learning slash like standing in her truth and what it means to be unapologetically black in this world where, you know, blackness is still kind of being othered, so to speak. So I'm waiting for that. I'm, this is, it's seeming to me like it, it's a more like nerdy version of Thug and I'm fucking here for it. That was a really enunciated for no reason. But anyway, I mean, it was for a reason. But again, unconventional female character. STEM girl. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Let's let's do this. Yes. Yes. I have a lot of good books this month. I'm really stoked about it. Next up, I have Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. This one comes out in October. I'm not exactly sure what day. I couldn't I was too lazy to look on Goodreads, I suppose. But um, in this one, in the world, I believe the world of setting the uh, country of Arqueta, they're called good luck girls because their luck is everything but. They are sold to this welcome has house as children. They are branded with cursed markings and then trapped in this kind of life that they were sold into. Um, one of the main characters, Clementine, accidentally murders a man and then the girls risk a dangerous escape and harrowing journey to find freedom, justice, and revenge in a country that wants them to have none of those things. Pursued by Arqueta's most vicious and powerful forces, both human and inhuman, their only hope lies in a bedtime story passed from one good luck girl to another. A story that only the youngest or most desperate would ever believe. It's going to take more than luck for all of them to survive. Look at this shit. Look at this fucking cover of this beautiful dark skinned black woman on the front. Fuck yes. Bro. Th look. Then we get to <laughs> all of those were my unconventional female character. <laughs> all of those fit that one prompt. Then we get to the next prompt which is read a book with a number in the title. Now also 100,000 Kingdoms fits this but I do as well want to read 
um, The Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. This is an East Asian reimagining of um, the story of the Evil Queen, like Snow White and the Evil Queen. This is like a reimagining of her backstory. This book came out in 2017. I got it when it came out in a book box. I was super stoked about it because I wanted this book. I've been watching the hype for this book for like months and months before it came out. And then I just couldn't read it because I just didn't want to be disappointed. Not that I thought it was bad. Nobody even that I know said it was bad. I just get like that sometimes when I'm super excited to read a book. I put it off because I'm like, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Please don't suck. What if it sucks? I can't read it because what if it sucks? I'm, I'm weird, okay? I'm weird. But, yeah. Alright, then we have the prompt. Read a book that takes place in hostile weather conditions. For this, I have No Judgments by Meg Cabot. This is an e-arc. My Kindle is some damn where, I don't know, so I will put the thing, yeah, the book here. I'll just put it here. This is a contemporary romance about a main character who lives on this island that gets um, hit, I was going to say blizzard, not blizzard, hurricane. This hurricane overtakes this island, um, cell service, the electricity gets cut off, they get cut off from the mainland. The main character, Bree, is really not worried about it until she starts to realize that like people who are cut off from the island or are kind of stuck in place where they are they've all been cut off from their pets so she kind of sets out to rescue all of these pets which i think is super cute but then in order to do that she needs help from her boss's super fucking hot gorgeous nephew which okay not necessarily a problem like a little romance starts brewing since they're all trapped in place and it's kind of like a, a stuck together trope type deal even though i mean they're stuck on a whole ass island and there's other people but still it's, it's an inhabited island however not the point Romance starts to brew in this kind of tense situation, which means romance is probably brewing fairly quickly. But then, the hurricane abates, um, service starts to come back, and then her ex, who had she'd previously broken up with before all this, brings his little repentant ass back into the picture, probably mucking up stuff. So now there's the question of whether or not this was just like, a fling that happened because of a tense situation you know like the plane goes down two characters sit next to each other survive and it's like but would we have felt this way had we not been in this tragic situation or you know is this real and it only moved a little faster because of the situation like we found ourselves because of this situation and it moved faster because of the situation but the emotions would have happened anyway with all the other stuff just maybe not as quick so really excited to read that. I tried to make my TBR pretty varying with um, YA and adult. There is fantasy, there is contemporary, there is um, urban fantasy. So I try to mix it so I wouldn't get like tired of any one thing and I could just like reorder the books. Um, and then again I don't have to read all the books in one category. I just gave myself options which is why there's so many. So. If I don't want to read No Judgment So, the other option um, that I'm keeping in the wings for the Harsh Weather Conditions prompt is Wolf in the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. This book, I'm going to have to read from the paper because I'm really not sure. Um, what did I write? It takes place in 1000 AD with a main character who is an Inuit shaman and then another main character who is a Viking warrior. They become unwilling allies as war breaks out between their people and their people's gods. One that will determine the fate of them all. I didn't really read past that, but I know um, Jess from Bold Eyes and Books and Jess from Jess Reads Books. I'm horrible YouTube channel names. I talk to y'all more on Twitter than anything else, so this, I'm stuck. Yes, Jess Reads Books. Okay, so those two Jesses <laughs> recommended it when I was trying to figure out a prompt, I mean a book for this prompt, and so I trust the both of their judgment a whole hell of a lot. So I've added it in case I don't want to read No Judgment, but No Judgment was specifically put there um, because I wanted a contemporary romance to kind of break up all of this fantasy I'm reading, even though one's urban fantasy, they're adult fantasy, young adult fantasy, there's a lot of young adult fantasy. So I put some romance to break it up because I don't think any of those fantasies are going to have any heavy romance in it. Some of the ones coming up might because I've heard things, but we'll see. Then the last prompt. Read a book featuring characters who reinvent themselves. So this one I have picked, We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. This is an Arabian inspired high fantasy. Bitch, we are super stoked about it. I started reading and listening to an audiobook when it came out because it is narrated by Fiona Hardingham and by Steve West who narrated, who both together narrated the um, uh, Ember and the Ashes series. So fucking good. And Steve West narrated Strange the Dreamer. 
so good. He also narrated um, Hugh's book in the Alona Andrews, the Kate Daniel series. He narrated Hugh's book. So I still haven't listened to that yet, but I know it's going to be dope. And that book was really good. I did not want to like Hugh. Hugh. I was not prepared, but that book, bitch, ripped me apart. I loved it. Anyway. Moving forward, <laughs> this one is an Arabian inspired epic fantasy, high fantasy, whichever you choose to call it. I think it is both. So far it's really good, but I'm starting it over because I was listening to it on the audiobook with um, books um, that have a lot of fantasy words in them. I suck at because I am a visual learner, so if I haven't read the book first, I can do it maybe with a sequel to this. But I really can't do it with the first book because like the Ars, which is the the fantasy, the forest that starts to take over and listening to it with um, narrators with accents and I really can't see the word and for some reason that bothers me and it doesn't stick if I don't know what the word is. Like regular words, obviously I can spell some so it's not an issue but with fantasy words. Like, I struggle with this in the Mime Order, too. Like, I listened to the Mime Order when I was on road trip, and then I picked up the Mime Order. I was like, the fuck are these words? What the hell is this? Mm. So, I'm going to read it first, and then later go back and listen to an audiobook, because I'm a weirdo. Or maybe I'll read it while I'm listening to the audiobook. I think I'll do that. I've never done that before, because I read faster than I, than the audiobook can go. I read really fast. Audiobooks, even speed up on two-speed, I, I still read faster than that. So, but I think I'll try that for this one, because narration is so... Anyway, you want to know what the book is about? Probably. If you don't, yeah, I'm sure you do because I talk about it all the time. Everybody's talking about this book because it's great. But if you don't know, I'll tell you anyway because I think you all need to read it. Take a breath, bitch. Shit. <sighs> so we have um, Zafira who is known as the Hunter. She doesn't want anybody to know that she is not a man because women are not allowed to do the things that she's been doing, mainly hunting. She's going into this forest, the hours, and... Um, She's going into this dangerous place because she needs to hunt for food for her people. She would not be able to do that had anybody know she was not um, actually male. So she hides as a male and garbs herself as one when she goes into this place. And then we have Nasir who is the Prince of Death. A.K.A. the assassin to his daddy, the king. The king is a very fucked up individual. More on that when you read the book. You'll find that for yourself. Both of them have to hide the truth of themselves because the truth could unravel everything and neither one wants to, to be what they are and what they have to be because of their circumstances and the truth of that and some other things in that little mix of stuff could cause a whole hell of a lot of fucking problems. Um, so Zafira decides that she's gonna go, she doesn't decide, she's kind of thrown into the situation where she is now gonna go into the R's. The R's is this, um, this big scary creepy forest that nobody ever really gets out of alive the one that she's going and hunting into even though it's dangerous because they need to eat yo um that place is growing and getting ready to like basically encompass their land in shadows and darkness and bad shit um so she goes into it on purpose in order to find this artifact that will bring magic back to the people and stop the spread of the hours now nasir who is the king's print uh assassin and the king's son is sent to retrieve the artifact and to kill the hunter because the hunter is going to get it. Now again, they all assume the hunter is a male. She ain't though. That is, yeah, that, that, that's obviously going to cause some problems, but I think there's romance. There's also a lot of other characters I haven't met, so I'm not sure who the romance is between, but I'm going to guess it's between Nasir, Nasir and Zafir. If it's not, don't fucking tell me, because I have gone into this book as blind as I possibly could with all the hype surrounding it, because I've been Twitter stalking the author, and I love her. And I love this book so far, even though I'm starting it over so I can just fully be encompassed in it because I can't really delve into an audiobook like I really, really want to because my attention span, she's not good. So, but reading a book, I can fully just immerse myself into it. So now I'm going to read the physical book and it's going to be all she wrote. It's going to be on like popcorn. Yeah. Donkey Kong. Popcorn. What the fuck ever. Another book where the characters have to reinvent themselves or the character reinvents herself is Diamond Fire by Alona Andrews. This is a book like 3.5 in the Burn For Me. It's not called Burn For Me. It's called The Hidden Legacy series by Alona Andrews. Um, in this series we step away from the main characters a little bit even though this series is about the wedding of the main characters from the original trilogy. It is from the point of view of um the fuck is her name? Catalina. The um next oldest sister to Nevada who is the main character from the book. It is told from Catalina's point of view and it is kind of her 
beginning like she's starting to turn into what she needs to be for the ongoing series sapphire flames which comes out i don't know it's not out yet but i read it and it was great um and then the character catalina is kind of totally different and it's i skipped the novella because i'm an idiot and i was really excited about sapphire flames so i read it because i didn't want to wait to read the novella so in the novella, presumably, hopefully, or I hope they didn't skip over it, but novella is when she kind of gets tutored by Rogan's mom and she gets remade into what she has to be to be the head of the household after Nevada marries into a different household. Now these households, if you don't know anything about this world, is an urban fantasy series in which like magic is kind of like goes through family, like we're old. Fam rich families have old money these families have old magic and the higher your magic rating the more powerful you are um nevada the main character is a prime her sister it has prime magic but she's gonna have to be the head of the new house that just got created in the third book um and in order to do that like there's all kind of like family house warfare and crazy shit going on so she's got to get some gumption and she has to know how to tread through these dangerous waters without pissing off the wrong person and getting people gunning for their house because they don't have alliances they don't have any backup really i mean they can call them at rogan they but they have to be able to stand on their own so catalina's kind of reinvented herself and a lot of that i believe takes place in this book because it's the only one i haven't read and i missed some things so i'll probably be reading that as well is that it and then also Kingdom of Souls, which, again, I just showed you so with the character who may, with Ara, who may or may not um, end up selling bits of herself and becoming someone she doesn't want to in order to get the power she may need to save everybody. So I consider that to be like she reinvents herself. You start to do things that aren't normally a part of you. You have to make those bad decisions and do things you usually wouldn't do. It's like creating a new aspect of your personality, doing things not maybe a new aspect of your personality, but creating new parts of you. And I mean, like, if I'm not the type of person to do X, Y, Z, but then I have to become that, I have to reinvent myself to make myself that kind of person, whether I like it or not, because shit's got to get done. That's how I see it. I could be wrong. However, I'm counting for that challenge, too. All right. That was a lot, y'all. So go um if you want other recommendations for these challenges that were not the books I gave you, I have, um... Contemporary romance, um, contemporary fiction that is not romance. I think I have historical romance, historical fiction, and um, other fantasy and urban fantasy and paranormal romance, urban fan fantasy, fantasy and paranormal romance um, recommendations that I have posted on the Mythathon Twitter page. I'll link that down in the description box. Go follow Mythathon Twitter page to see all of the co hosts and the creator post cool shit again i posted recommendations for my challenges down in the um for my prompts on that twitter page so go check it out and also make sure you're following all of the co-hosts because you don't know what may happen just saying also like i said don't forget i will i need not forget that i am going to try to vlog every week reading vlog while i'm reading these books there's a lot of books but we're gonna see how they go so Thanks for watching this video, guys. She was a long one. Ellings gonna suck. And uh, I think that's like 40 minutes of footage. Fuck me. But that's it for this video.